Good afternoon. Welcome to the Preservation Association of Lincoln Brown Bag Lectures. My name is Eileen Burke, and I'm the coordinator of these brown bags. Our videotaping today is sponsored by the Historic Preservation Fund of the U.S. Department of the Interior through the Nebraska State Historical Society and the City of Lincoln, a certified local government. Our speaker today is Ed Zimmer. Ed is the City of Lincoln Preservation Planner, a position that he's held for uh, 28 years. Before coming to Lincoln, Ed was a freelance architectural historian in Boston. Um, he's native to Omaha, Nebraska, and he has an undergraduate degree from Lindenwood College and a PhD from Boston University. Ed's talk today is um, the 21st Annual Preservation Association of Lincoln Awards. And the title is And the Winner Is. Please join me in welcoming Ed Zimmer. Thank you, Eileen. I kind of like that she has to stop and do the math on how many years. Um, means I've been doing it a while. I don't think we've done a TV presentation all 21 years, but we've done a lot of them. And I'd like to start with where we met, some of the places we've met along the years, because the award ceremony is kind of the year in review to a certain extent as well. And I think it's kind of exciting that many of the places PAL has met for the annual meeting or for various other meetings have then gone on to great success. And I don't think, I couldn't think back through the years that PAL's had an annual meeting, that we've lost a site in which we had an annual meeting. Um, and usually in preservation, you win some and you lose some, and we win some and we lose some but not so far on the annual meeting sites. Um, PAL had its beginnings in the uh, old U.S. Post Office and Courthouse, old federal building, now called the Grand Manse, which didn't look quite like the 1905 perspective when we first were going there, um, but it did look very black and white. And the great courtroom in which PAL met in the early days had a dropped ceiling, um, windows were, were enclosed. Um, it was obviously a great room but not the room that Powell could visit then several years later for the annual meeting with the beautiful ceiling exposed and the windows reopened and that spectacular room, um, that 1905 courtroom, um, back in beautiful view. Um, Whittier didn't look quite like this when Powell first visited, um, but we were privileged by an early visit when the front steps were not front steps anymore but were chain link fence and when the front doors were plywood, um, and then went back for an annual meeting after the university had put Whittier back uh, in wonderful shape as an educational building again. And so I think another uh, great revisit. Um, Pal's been to Whitehall a couple times um, out in University Place, a beautiful olive white mansion that then for many years from 1925 um, has served as a state facility and for many years as an orphanage. Um, visited Wayuka's Rudge Chapel and Trinity Methodist at um, between 15th and 16th on A Street. And so in that grouping, now Pal for an annual meeting has visited a giant chicken um, because this, meeting, this year's annual meeting um, was to a Lincoln iconic landmark um, Lee's Chicken out at um, Coddington and West Van Dorn, um, visiting not particularly for the architecture, but for the great um, tradition and a wonderful, um, iconic Lincoln eating place. We should have visited earlier when the chicken was missing so that the return of the chicken to its post could be part of the record, but this was Powell's first official visit to Lee's. And we talked a little bit about um, Lee's history uh, dating back in the 1940s and many folks stayed on and ate but not from exactly this menu. I don't think anybody got a sirloin steak uh, for $4 um, but it was a fun annual meeting and a great location and it was wonderful of Lee's to share their space with us and we were indoors not at the outdoor uh, historic picnic grounds and while there we talked a little bit about the neighborhood history uh, which didn't begin with Lee's Chicken, 
um, about all the way back in the 1890s, uh, when further west on West Van Dorn, Western Normal College uh, was established in a grand old main type building that like several of the six colleges established around um, the outskirts of Lincoln had a fire and was transformed from Western Normal into Western Military Academy. Um, this was a George Berlinghoff redo when after the fire, um, Berlinghoff designed the militarization of the remnants of the old college and it operated several years as a military academy. And then in its last years, um, or some of its last years, uh, the building served as part of the reformatory, um, as it says, and it's still remnants of the building around the campus of the uh, men's reformatory north of the north entrance um, to Pioneers Park. And I think we can see there the fence that went up around and the towers changed from academic offices to guard offices, guard, guard towers. Um, and some remnants of the building are still there in use as warehouse, not as um, housing of any sort. We talked a little bit about Pioneers Park, the great resource that would also be why we've got um, eating places and uh, historic ice cream stops out on the west side of town. This was the uh, Ernst Terming House signature block for the Pioneers Park design, clearly derived from the um, designs for the cheek blocks on the north face of the Capitol and the bison design there. And Herming House laid out the park with those wonderful vistas, um, taking prairie and by planting conifers, creating view sheds, um, both within the park and then some of the most dramatic distant views to the state capitol um, down those LAs that Herming House created. So that was our setting um, in March for the, um, this year's annual PAL Awards. And now to look at some of the um, award winners this year. There are several categories of awards, um, beginning with the Great Commoner. Um, and in this category, PAL honors a preservation activity that, um, an educational activity that um, shares local history and local preservation values with the community. Um, and we've had um, many great awards, beginning with um, recognizing the work uh, that Bryan Hospital did in creating the museum at uh, Fairview, um, where the great commoner, William Jennings Bryan, um, had his home. We honored the Heart of Lincoln um, project that for many, many years uh, worked with realtors about the value of homes in the older part of the city and created the great Doorways of Lincoln poster. Uh, we honored um, Mrs. Ruth Folley and her contribution to local history through uh, many, many hours of oral history that she did with um, Abby Anderson um, and created, um, Abigail and, and Mrs. Folly created a wonderful resource about 20th century life in Lincoln. Um, we honored Pal's own Doug Beale, um, great advocate for um, Whittier through many of its um, days when uh, it was a great community concern and Doug welcoming us for a tour, um, and Jim Dick for his project um, educating grade school children about architecture in downtown Lincoln, um, which he conducted for many years before his retirement. And this year, um, Pal honored the Hildegard Center for the Arts, which was doing a year-long project on heroes, and particularly um, honored the Hearing from Heroes project that Hildegard carried out um, a theatrical tour of Wayuka Cemetery um, with a group of drama students and English students from Lincoln High School, um, led by their teacher, Chris Maley. Um, I got to participate to the degree of giving them some input on um, possible heroes to honor. And then um, Chris and his students wrote a script for a number of sites around the cemetery and students stood and in a wonderful coordinated um, afternoon, all the visitors were divided up into groups and they circulated from one grave site to another and from one student presenting a history of the person or person related to that grave site all through the cemetery. And then when the drum corps would 
beat the drums, rotate to the next site. And it was a great afternoon, went off beautifully. Um, I got to stand and uh, watch Haven Kirkendall present um, about um, the Johnson family. Um, she presented as Odessa Johnson, the widow of John Johnson, the photographer um, of Lincoln's African American community. Um, so I got to provide one of my own pictures because um, I got the opportunity to. Um, Haven was working closest to the fence and therefore needed a little sound reinforcement um, to, to be heard over the O Street traffic. Um, but other students were as brave as to stand at Gordon McRae's site and sing and play guitar six times over as the folks rotated through the cemetery. Or maybe it was eight. I just remember it was a lot and it was fun. Great attendance, great event. Um, so this year, Pal honored the Hildegard Center for the Arts and Lincoln High School in um, teacher Chris Maley and a wonderful group of students who came in. Um, some of them were there for the um, annual event. And we really appreciate that um, Chris and Kathy Harrington, who headed up the project for Hildegard, have come today, along with many of the honorees, and it makes it fun to remember um, without the fried chicken backdrop, um, but still um, a great afternoon in, in March. Next category is residential rehab, because um, a lot of the preservation activity is folks um, working with and, and enhancing their, their homes and enhancing their neighborhoods through that. Um, and we've looked at um, projects from um, the Tom and um, the Frank and Nellie Cochran Woods House on Sheridan Boulevard, uh, Ernst Terminghouse, not Ernst Terminghouse, George Berlinghoff's um, bungalow, which seems kind of like an oxymoron that George Berlinghoff could do a bungalow, and so I always stumble on this one. But this was for the um, Reese O. Stake family at 28th and N Street in Woods Park. Um, Lily Blaze's rescue of what we call a dead plant. Um, house, this one no one thought was salvageable, um, and Lily put it back together into a wonderful Queen Anne residence on Euclid and near south. Um, the Sartori family for the farmstead uh, east of Lincoln that they, another Queen Anne, they put back in lovely condition. Um, and the rescue of the Levitt House farmhouse that used to stand at 70th and O, um, that Bruce Stair and his family carried out to um, South 148th Street and turned into the Prairie Creek Bed and Breakfast. Um, the Jones family for another Burlinghoff house, this is a little more typical Burlinghoff, um, the Grand John Yost House in Franklin Heights, 25th and Franklin in uh, near South. Um, and one of my favorite houses because of this exterior, in interior staircase, um, this is the um, uh, Susan Marks House at um, 17th and A Streets, and it's a Ferdinand Fisk design. Um, it's kind of a bungalow on the front that then goes into this exciting room that rises up with a staircase in front of you. Um, and this year, um, in a particularly uh, difficult and I think wonderfully documented project, Paul and Sherry Johnson, neighbors of this house at 4027 Holdridge, took a neglected house um, that was, a, I think, a, a neighborhood worry and a neighborhood eyesore um, and went to work on it. And what a lot of work it must have been to put that into this condition, um, that into this condition. I think there must have been a sale on pink at one point along. Um, some of the remodeling in my house we call de-pinking. Um, and this is a um, lovely staircase and looks so much better in um, the careful treatment it got. And so the Residential Rehab Award for 2013 went to Paul and Sherry Johnson for the Henry Lucky Hans Mueller House. Um, Lucky is an interesting developer, did a lot of the Professor's Row area of East Campus, and then later went and served a term as congressman from 
um, our district in Nebraska. Um, and this was great to have the Johnsons there and great to see Sherry here today again. So thank you for coming. Um, and thank you for putting this house back in shape. We often say the best landlords are the ones who live nearby. And um, Johnsons are carrying that out with this house as well. We also look at the category of commercial institutional rehab because um, a lot of important projects in town are not residential, but um, um, working on the um, commercial areas, keeping the uh, traditional part of the city downtown and the commercial areas throughout the city intact. Um, and this year, it was a residential going into an institutional use, um, but a huge residence, uh, the Morris Wheelhouse at uh, 17th and C Streets in Near South, house of about 192. When this was built, it was listed in the newspaper as second only to Fairview of the houses that had been built that year. And to be second to Fairview is kind of like First Plymouth's Tower, being the second best tower in Lincoln to the Capitol is not a bad thing at all. And second best to Fairview was pretty grand accolade as well. This house is on my short list of houses I really want to know who designed it. And I don't know yet, uh, so I can't retire yet. Um, we know it was built by O.P. Harrison about 1902 for Morris Wheel, who was an immigrant um, to the U.S. and then came from Kansas to Lincoln. and shifted from being a grocer to a banker and founded a little bank he called Bank of Commerce that he got a national charter on and it became National Bank of Commerce or NBC Bank. Lived in this house about 50 years, um, up into the 1950s. Then it went through a series of uses, um, nursing home for a time, was a bed and breakfast for a while, um, and then was purchased most recently by a fraternity that set about trying to undo some of the um, poor rehab that had occurred um, in some of those middle years, not, not more recently, but quite a while ago, um, such as rebuilding the porch floor by pouring concrete over rotting wood. Um, not a recommended technique. I don't think it meets the Secretary of the Interior standards, um, and it was quite a project even to take it apart to put back together again. Um, but take it apart they did, and put it back into lovely condition um, and this is a project for, and I always have to look at the name of fraternity or I get the wrong Greek letters, Chi Phi Fraternity. Um, Barb Marion Hacker Architects have been carrying out the work uh, in very good close consultation with the, the Lincoln Historic Preservation Commission and uh, were awarded the 2013 Commercial Institutional Rehab Award. Um, and Greg Munn, um, of Barbara Mary Hacker was there to receive the award for the fraternity and for the designers who are doing lovely, careful work on a very important Lincoln historic resource. Integration of old and new is a category that I think was created a couple of years into the process of um, these awards because some projects can be very important to maintaining the quality of life in Lincoln and the historic values in Lincoln, but may not be traditional historic preservation projects. Um, for instance, um, the additions and rebuilding and, and creation of the F Street Community Center um, out of the old fire station in the foreground with a big middle addition um, following some of those Gothic uh, or Tudor peaks of the Fisk and McGinnis fire station, um, and then continuing onto the corner uh, where walls of the old sh um, grocery store, Schaefer's appliance store, cr continued that um, Tudor character so that this rec center with a big gym hidden behind all of this um, could fit well into its traditional um, in close neighborhood. Um, even a brand new building um, like um, Nebco's beautiful uh, one landmark center um, at the corner of uh, Lincoln Mall and 10th Street that so strengthens the relationship between the capital um, and the county city complex, a traditional relationship built into the original plan of Lincoln, um, but not really well established by parking lots. And now with the completion of the next building uh, that's under construction um, just east of it and the almost completion of uh, Farmers Mutual Insurance on the block next east of that, 
um, we'll have a lovely continuation of that um, strong character from uh, local government to state government. And so this brand new building received the award one year. Um, projects like the addition of the handsome kind of sculptural dock feature onto the old simple sawmill building at the north end of Haymarket up at 8th and S streets um, seemed really to be that combination. Not a, not a pure rehab, didn't need to be a pure rehab, but really kind of a reinterpretation and a lovely one um, of an historic building. And this year, Pahal is honoring the Griswold House, um, lovely French eclectic house in Piedmont, um, lovely on the back as well as on the front. Um, and Piedmont has a very interesting feature to its plat that rather than the front yards being established by zoning, as they are, well, today they would be established by zoning, um, or something written into, a, a setback written into the uh, original plat. The plat says, take each lot and draw an X across it and put the center of your house within 10 feet of the center of that X, which means very deep front yards, sometimes rather shallow backyards because they're equidistant rather than house being closer to the street. And it sets up each house within the gem of its own lot, uh, which also meant that then the lovely Griswold house had a great big front yard, a rather shallow backyard, and an owner with an ambition to create a guest house and a garage on his rather shallow back lot. Fortunately, Tom Ogden is a very patient and deliberative and persistent owner because we had to write a change to the zoning code to make it work. And part of the change was we wrote into the landmark provision where you can obtain a special permit for a use not otherwise allowed, that that change could also be to skosh a little closer to a side lot line if necessary, or go a little bit taller to carry out a project on a landmark property. Um, Tom has been such a careful steward of the house that he was perfectly happy to landmark it and then with that in place, applied for the special permit to build a spectacular guest house, garage, carriage house, gem of a backyard feature that his neighbors were delighted with so that they were happy to see him come a little closer to the side lot line than we could have allowed otherwise um, and make this all fit in. Um, John Badami was his architect um, and was very responsive to both client and to the Preservation Commission working out the details um, and he was very uh, fortunate to have Homer Hoxie as his contractor and they built this beautiful garage carriage house um, in a French second or French eclectic revival style. Incorporates a garden shed at the back uh, for uh, Nancy Ogden's gardening in that beautiful backyard. I think we'll just dwell on this potting shed for a little moment. Isn't that lovely? And upstairs above the um, parking area of the garage, a lovely, tidy, little, tight um, guest house for family when visiting. Um, little galley kitchen. And so for that brand new building, but one that fit in beautifully well into the traditional Piedmont neighborhood and did great honor to the Griswold House landmark that is attached to uh, Nancy and Tom Ogden, John Badami architect, and Homer Hoxie contractor uh, were honored with the integration of Old and New Award. And I'm delighted that John, Tom, and Homer came today as well. So you, you honored us by coming. Thank you. Now, with digital photography, if I were missing one of these, we could re-photograph them. And if I've spelled anybody's name wrong, just let me know and we'll correct it as we go. So we'll, we'll do live work. Did I get it right, Homer? Yes. Good. Thank you. <laughs> Stewardship Award um, honors those projects that have a long continuity of uh, taking care of an important place. And so projects like the Allington's um, beautiful care of uh, Maple Lodge on 20th and Euclid, um, one of the 
most unusual and, and most significant of Ferdinand Fisk's designs in Lincoln. Um, the Retzloff family uh, for what might be the oldest uh, occupied building in uh, Lancaster County, the, Retz, the Charles Retzloff House out on the Stevens Creek stock farm east of Lincoln, about an 1867 residence. Um, another lovely um, stone house, the Crawl House, um, that is a long ongoing project of its um, owners who, um, in boarding it up, put um, curtains on the windows so that, that while they work on the roof and giving the building things that it never had, like plumbing and electricity, um, that it would also have a, a cared for appearance. Uh, the Joyo Theater, uh, Lincoln's only uh, traditional neighborhood small town movie theater that has had a succession of families um, taking it on as a personal project to keep it operating. And several projects at our most significant landmark, the state capitol, um, have been honored in the stewardship category. I think the citizens of Nebraska are the recipients of that award, uh, as we've been the recipients of this beautiful building, um, and I think it's given great support to its um, restoration activities in recent decades. And so this year, um, returning to a um, site that had been honored as an individual project, but this year looking at it uh, for that long continuity, um, the Woods House at 2501 uh, Sheridan Boulevard, and this in the early days when the Woodses were still hauling in the trees to um, enrich the area. And I think we've guessed, I like guessing this is a pin oak, just, I mean, it's kind of hard in a black and white photo in a bare winter tree, but the size of tree they were hauling in and with horse and buggy to um, plant that neighborhood from the very beginning. Um, and so Pal honored Tom and Joan Haruza, um, the wonderful um, couple who've taken great care of this house now for um, several decades, and have, in doing so, made it a welcome place for all kinds of benefits, including uh, wonderful visits uh, for Pal. The chandelier in the main staircase. Built into that main staircase are the pipes and in the basement below the pumps of the player organ that sits in the main parlor music room um, and that the Hruses, feeling things should work, um, invested in putting that back into operating condition and it's a beautiful instrument. Really the whole house is the instrument of that organ. Um, but a lovely family home, multi-generation home um, for the Haruzas um, and very generous in hosting events at the home. So the beautiful 1916 Woods House, or what we should call the Woods Haruza House, um, got the stewardship award for Tom and Joan Haruza, um, great friends of Powell and great friends of Lincoln. And I like them so well, I'm just gonna leave that picture up for a minute. I think I want to skip over that one because I got that one wrong. <laughs> I had this lingering memory in my mind that somewhere this morning I'd seen the year 2012 and it was on that last slide. City Center Award is another one that Pal created um, a couple years into the process because some of the most important activities weren't traditional, not only weren't traditional historic preservation, they weren't necessarily even related to a building, but were some of the activities that breathe life into the city and, and make Lincoln a delightful place to live. Um, so projects like Ann Burkholder's creation of an art colony in an old warehouse building in Haymarket were honored in the past. Or um, out in that public living room that is 7th Street and 8th um, and P Street on Saturday mornings from May to October Farmer's Market um, that is, I think, one of our, our greatest um, urban pieces and why we like cities so that people can live together and feed each other fun food on Saturday mornings. Um, July Jam, which, or this 
looks like the Sheldon in the background. So this, yeah, this Jazz would be and Jazz in June. Yeah, um, great um, annual activity. Um, th this would be one where we didn't have an annual meeting during the um, Star City Parade, so we don't have to mourn the demise of Star City Parade as Pal's fault. And maybe it'll have a chance to come back again, but uh, great fun was had a lot of years. And to have this picture with the Capitol in the background is just one of my favorite state capitol photos. Um, and this year, um, Pal honored a blended institution, um, two great Lincoln sites, um, Ideal Grocery, and, and that's an early crew at Ideal, and Leon's, which just uh, last year joined together um, as, as one corporate entity, but two of Lincoln's favorite traditional, small-scale, neighborhood-oriented, but shared by everybody in the city, uh, grocery stores. Um, and joy it is to, to have those uh, flourishing and remaining and going through a transition in ownership but still um, able to um, flourish in the community and provide the kind of um, special service and foods that they do. And so the award this year went to Leon's and Ideal um, because they joined up this year. And Rob and Roy Toy, Topher Voorhees, and Ted Terrell are the principals of that. And we were fortunate to have three of them attend and receive the award. Um, I think not probably, I don't know if they expected to get a preservation award when, when Leon's bought Ideal, but um, preserving they are, and I think we're glad they do. Then two final categories. The president uh, of PAL each year has the option to choose one or more awards uh, honoring special people, special activities, um, whatever is, has made that year richer um, in the view of the president. And we were fortunate to have Becky Martin um, presiding over PAL um, last year, and she made two great awards, one to Bobby Allen, and we're glad that Bobby and Hal are here today. I also particularly like this photo, because I think of, I think of um, Becky as the angel of Woods Park, and here is the halo. I always can see it, but sometimes other people can't see that halo, but there it is. Um, and Bobby's been a longtime board member and supporter of PAL. You see her in lots of the photos going back over the years for any PAL activity, and a great, wonderful, cheerful, optimistic person who just makes it better any meeting she attends. And so glad that Bobby and Hal are here today. And then the second award was for an activity um, and a person. And the activity was the wonderful um, bungalow tour that Pal put on last year of the Woods Park neighborhood, and particularly to Priscilla Handy, um, who helped make that happen. And uh, it's, it's a special person who can persuade her neighbors to open their houses and have people tromp through them um, on a weekend afternoon. It was great fun. A lot of people attended, um, and it was just a wonderful activity. And I think celebrated a kind of house that we have all over Lincoln, but Woods Park's particularly rich in, and has the Woods Park uh, Bungalow Landmark District. And to be able to see the variety and the, the, the wonderful um, dwellings that, that folks have created in, in that uh, collection of smaller houses uh, was just a great activity for PAL. And, and, um, one that lots of people contributed to, but Priscilla was, was a main neighborhood mainstay. So the award went to Priscilla. And continuing the fun of that, um, here were folks, um, some of the porch monitors for a day um, of that visit. And of course, that included the grand star of the 2013 awards. The Helen Busalis Award went to longtime board member John Strope. Our star, um, who was going off the board, but had been, a, he'd come to every um, Woods Park or every Waiuka tour and give people a bottle of water. I think they want a beer or something stronger if they have to go walking through Waiuka with me, but John would come and give them a bottle of water. Um, 
he was the water man at um, so many Sheridan Boulevard tours. I'm glad that even as he's left the board, his questions haven't stopped, because I learned things. John has a question, I have to research it, find the answer. He thinks I knew it all along. I don't know any of these things, I have to look them up. But he asks great questions, and so I get to learn new things. And so we were very pleased to honor John with the Helen Busalis Award for 2013. The, Life, the Lincoln Lifetime Achievement Award in Historic Preservation. After that wonderful afternoon of awards, with great attendance and lots of people to honor, many of us then stayed and ate chicken, and it was great fun. Thank you very much. I don't know that we need a question period after the award ceremony, but you should walk around and shake each other's hands because we had great attendance by the winners. Thank you. <laughs>